I'm glad uh, Mr. Wall's not going. <clears throat> that chain loose or <laughs> you're sticking around. So uh, I'm looking here, what I'm hearing from this report, and I saw earlier when I looked at it, it sounds like the reading between the lines, the committee, I know it's the final decision lies upon this body, but that sounds like there's someplace in the middle of some kind of you know, well-balanced mix. But my question to you is like, when we have these items right here, infrastructure items, bathrooms, elevators, windows, I'll take uh, roofing for example. If we go with the heavy infrastructure light U addition, we can spend a little over $50 million. If we go to the opposite end, where it's light infrastructure and very heavy on new additions, it's less than 50%. It's $22.6 uh, million. Where I'm going with this is that do we have the details, like you know, what buildings need to be done right away, or some can wait five years? Yes, we do. Uh, we're working on that plan, and we have a pretty good rough draft of it done. Uh, we met with the buildings last week, all the principals in the buildings, to make sure they had a chance to look at it, make sure everything they thought was needed in there. Uh, we we have 10 buildings left to still have to go through that process. They weren't able to meet last week. So we're going to finish it this week, and hopefully by the time we come back to spring break, it will be ready. Um, in your document, I have in the folder for discussion after the VIP, uh, summary pages of where we're at right now. And that way you kind of get an idea. It's broken down by building. And it's also broken down by category. So you'll see that. Okay. The detail we'll have once it gets all vetted and we have that third party review it, we'll make sure all the numbers are in there are correct, that we know what the dollar values truly are. What we try to do at the VIP committee is not actually say this is what we're going to do, but give you kind of a plan of what it would look like if we had to do heavy infrastructure and new buildings, just kind of doing a mix of one or the other. Not to say those are the exact things we do because we haven't even had a discussion yet on that as a board level or a community level, sure. but just kind of get an idea of what it would look like if one of those three scenarios was recommended. I'm imagining, if, I mean, if we don't have that information yet, I know we're working on it. I know it's a huge district and yes. putting this together is not easy. So maybe the, I'm imagining if I was a community, uh, if I was a committee member, I was just kind of looking just like a generic list here. Right, kind of looking what the plan would look like and it would get further detailed as we go down through the process. Okay. I know that was a question I asked many times and I wish I would have had that information available but again, as you said, it just takes a while to get all the details down on paper and have it reviewed by all the building principals and then vetted by our outside resources. When the committee toured the buildings, would, did we point out certain things that need to be done like right away? Yes. Okay. And, the, yes. and that's where a lot of their questions came from. And it's kind of where we got to where we developed a list of the priorities that they voted on because they got to see that in person. And that's where I'm sure had influence on how they rated what needed to be done. They're looking at the bathrooms, that was the most highly rated thing. They got to see that, and that's why they felt that that was something that had to be addressed, you know, was one of the top priorities. Great. Thanks Security, I think, was roughly number two or close to it. Thank you. Trustee Watts? I just want to say thank you for putting this presentation together and for all of your time to do this, because I would imagine you guys took time away from your own family. So I truly appreciate this, and it just saddens me that bathrooms are the first thing. And I know when I went visited the school, they, I definitely checked all, I visited every single school, I think, but two during COVID of last year and bathrooms were my number one ask to see because I wanted to be able to see what do the bathrooms look like because I hear about the conditions of the bathroom and how there's some kids that don't want to use the bathroom because of the self-respect issues. And it just makes me sad that the bathrooms are on there, but I'm happy that it's on number one. So it's, it's, it, it's emotional, but um, but thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart because I appreciate all the time you guys put into this, so. Trustee Peschlikov? Okay, I also wanted to, I've been on task force in the past and I understand the um, amount of time it takes and it's quite an education when you get to participate. So it also is, is helpful um, to be part of the community who wants to participate and go out and, and communicate correct information about what's occurring in our district and our city. So I too thank you all. Um, 
one of my questions is just so that for clarification purposes for everyone. 3.5 mils seems to be what the majority of the people were comfortable with, and it would generate, I'm seeing at the bottom of each of these things, around 250 million is necessary for a lot of these ideas to be implemented. It, is that the number we would be generating with um, maintaining the 3.5 mils? And that's where the conversation that had at the VIP committee was very across the board. And we told them that right now we're at 3.5 mils. So I'm sure that led to some of the discussion of maintaining what we're currently at. As you can see, some wanted to go higher and some wanted to go lower. So but that's would why that be sufficient to do, I mean, we know that a wish list is always a wish list and that you have to whittle down with the money you actually are generating. What is the 3.5 mils going to generate over the next 10 years, 20 years for yeah, us? So anywhere from 200 to 250, depending 250, on how we design right. the bonds. Yes. Okay. So when we talk about the differentiation between heavy infrastructure versus light infrastructure versus new buildings versus that money is going to have to be divvied up and it's only 250 million basically to cover all of those potential. Not um, all. No, it you'll won't see be that all. we'll say I'm that the needs way outweigh that. Yes. But the, yeah. the discussion was to... keep being responsible to the taxpayers and what the taxpayers would actually approve. Right. That right. was a lot of discussion. I, I just want to clarify that this is not going to, we're not going to get everything. Correct. Trustee Thorpe. So, on the question that was asked to the committee about voting for an increase in the number of mills, it just says to increase it. We didn't give options of a half versus a mill or anything like that, correct? Where people could say, well, I'd be okay doing one more, but I wouldn't want to do two more. Well, we used one mill because if they only want to do a half, it was an easy division, or if they want to do two, it was an easy addition. So we used one mill just as an example of what it would do. On that other slide. Yes. But at least for this question to the committee, it was just um, asking about an increase, not how much of an increase. Correct. Okay. Uh, the 3.5 number, is that, uh, so can you explain to me of when does that expire as far as the years of the bond and yep. when does it pick up? So after 22, 23, that 3.5 mils will drop to a little above one mil. And that'll kind of maintain for the next 10 years and then it would roughly stop. If we do nothing. If we do if nothing. If we do nothing. Correct. So and what we're doing then, we're going to just increase for the next 10 years by 2.2, bring that back to 3.5? Well, what we do is we look over the life of what we're going to put the bonds at, and that difference between maintaining our existing one and a difference, that's what would maintain 3.5 mm -hmm. mils through the life of the bonds or close to it because everything slightly drops over time because of taxable values. That's what the proposal was discussed about and what it could raise. The, you know, we haven't really had the, this is the first time the board's really discussing the subject, you know, outside of what we did back in 2019. In 2019, we also talked about maintaining the mills at 4.82 back then. Since then, that 4.82 has dropped down to 3.5. Right. And that's because of, obviously, the, the bond didn't pass. We're dropping as we're going. And we've also done a refinancing Re in refining, 2017, yeah. refinancing in 2020. One, and then another refinancing in 2020, we just finished up. Okay. And that whole refinancing we just did at the last board meeting isn't even calculated <coughs> into these projections. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of what you said. The 2022 refunding that the board approved at the last mm -hmm. board meeting yes, is yeah. not even figured out into these number of projections because we didn't know what the results were at that time. Okay, all right, thank you. Trustee okay. Watts? So, so I have to go back to your presentation after hearing this in this presentation. So I'm hearing that the 3.5 will expire 2022-2023. Right. It'll not expire. It'll be reduced. It'll be reduced. To okay. To a little over one mil. So for those who are listening and they want to know in practical terms, what does that mean to the bottom line? If they were, if the, if we were to present a bond for 3.5 mils, what does that look like for a person who's paying taxes on their home? So right now, that 3.5 mils will maintain what they're currently paying now in the number of mills. Okay. Does that mean in the number of dollars? Because depending on the taxable value and the assessed value in your houses, mm -hmm. 
you know, that could potentially right. go up so you can pay more taxes or it potentially could go down and you can pay less taxes. What we're saying is we're maintaining the number of mills that we're going to levy for our debt purposes. So if, say the house is valued 100000 Do we have that sort of number of saying this is how much a 3.5 mil? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so... And that was we, discussed at the VIP committee. Do we have that that we can share now? Yes, if David okay. wants to bring up that. Because I think I everyone's saying, that. like, we hear the mills, but what does that actually look like when you get that yeah. tax? We've shared that graph many times. Okay. Let me try to dig Okay, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because that was important for people to know the affordability of what that actually is. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, Trustee Barry. Going back to Trustee Petrikoff, there was a very, very great point that you made about the 3.5. Now, knowing that maybe other than Jack O'Reilly, you were probably the number one or two guy to understand all this. Okay, the question mm -hmm. I'm going to ask is... We got to the 3.5 because the last bond didn't pass. So because the last bond didn't pass, we dropped 1.32 mils. So did you take into consideration that property values are going up, SEVs is going to follow, and one mil in 2020, you know, 22, 23 is going to be more than? More something different. Yeah, so the projections we had in there based upon the roughly, I think, a 2% increase over time on taxable values. So that's how we determined how that, that maintaining the 3.5 mils maintaining would actually generate additional money each year as it increased by 2%, and that's how they came to what we could potentially bond for for maintaining the 3.5 mils. So there is an escalation increase in taxable values. Two to three percent is what you're Two percent, roughly, yes. Well, I know you can only deal with, with the numbers you have right now, but you're going to be very happy after this year, the numbers you're going to see. Oh, well, the, the pandemic and the way the inflational rate changes, that changes the whole model. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, again, we didn't want to jump yeah, and change numbers as we continue the discussion to maintain what we have. We have that. Oh. So he has it, he'll bring it. Okay, then what? Oh, oh. There you go. <clears throat> oh, wow, look back. So this gives you the market value of the home and the taxable value. Again, you know, the market the value of the home could be much higher than what you pay taxes on, depending on how long you've lived in the house, if you bought it brand new. We won't get into that complexity. But all that is determined at the city or township level. And so looking at 3.5 mils, you can see what it means on an annual basis. So a $100,000 home would have roughly a 50% taxable value if they were just purchased that year. And that would raise about $175 per year they would pay in taxes for the debt millage. Then we broke it down by month and broke it down by day. Now again, that 3.5 mils doesn't change. However, the taxable value can slowly increase. So that $175 for a $100,000 value home would go up slightly depending on the increase in the value. Well, thank you for providing the slide because it gives us a, a better concrete example yes. as to how that will. So when you get the tax, when you get your bill, right, your tax bill, you see what that is. And then going back to this in terms of the bathrooms, and I know this is an ongoing discussion at every single school district. To Do we know what sort of items and or doors and or other things that we'd be putting in the bathroom that we wouldn't have to replace. And I think this was a discussion. Do you know? See, yeah. So I don't know if, do we already have an idea of what that would be, or is that still something down the line that we would have to look at? That's probably something we would want to work with the building principals who know and our operations department who replaces it, you know, on a, on a sometimes continual basis. So there's a balance system of, you know, grade versus look, mm -hmm. you know, of how we would have to come to an agreement. And again, you know, all, we're talking a lot of conceptual things here. There has to be time with the architects, you know, and operations and the, you know, the principles of design, what they actually would want in there. Dr. Malenko wanted to add something. So yeah. I'll add something on the bathroom too, but I appreciate it. I just wanted to mention too, and last time we talked about it, but Tom, under his leadership, um, you know, the board has approved the refinancing bond, which has saved millions of dollars for the taxpayers. And we've done that now several times. I just wanted to point that out so the public knows. I know we mentioned it last um, month at the, or at the previous board meeting. As far as the bathrooms go, too, and I had a very positive uh, conversation, for example, with a community member about the bathroom issue. And it was something that kept coming up with my council, the student advisory council, back in the 2019 bond. 
So that money would have been allocated from that bond. Um, you know, some of the things when you prioritize the list, as Tom explained, the funding system, you know, the question we discussed was, well, what are the higher priorities? So obviously, school safety is a number one. You know, electricity and boilers and heat and roofs, those are things that, you know, um, will take a higher priority than the bathroom redesign, um, even though we want to do the bathroom redesign. But when you're looking at a district our size, we're talking about hundreds of bathrooms across the way. So one bathroom here and there may not be the cost, but when you look at the enormous amount in the district, it's a huge cost. When we had Dearborn High, you get emergencies, for example, when the electrical went down, and we know there's issues there that we had to uh, implement because of the aging infrastructure. And another example would be Oakman with the old building approaching 100 years, and thanks to our staff that we moved them. We didn't want to go online, but we did, but we had the major infrastructure issue yeah. with the plumbing that was 23 feet below ground that we had to resolve that week, and it was just before the election. So when you're balancing the need, what's going to happen is without a bond, we will have to continue to implement putting money into areas. Obviously, you can, you know, you can put money here or take it there, but for example, when we settled the contracts, because we know we have a massive staff shortage, that money does have to come from somewhere. So it, it was taken uh, money that we had added to infrastructure and things. We had to balance that with now money that's you know, for our employees. So um, some of the designs of the bathroom, um, which are more effective because the principals, for example, at the high school and, and middle school, I know when we studied it at the time, we're looking at like, you know, you go to Metro Airport and there, there's no doors. You have the walk around. Um, and so they're more optimal for many, many reasons to have those kind of situations. And then you can enhance it. And the students that always tell me, you know, they wanted to see the bathrooms upgraded. It was something important to them. So I just wanted to add those aspects. Thank you. As we go. Yep. I have a question about the new additions and new um, buildings. And I see only one elementary school, and obviously 240 million or in that range, or 250 million. As of right now, if we can, if you can remind us on an average, what are the costs of building a brand new elementary, a brand new middle, and a brand new high yep. school with a size of both of our schools? So what we estimated is roughly about $42 million for a new elementary for a larger size one. You know, it wouldn't be necessarily the size of Oakman, but more of you know, like a Gear Park type scenario. Yeah. How many students are in that size building? Gear Park, there are 300, 400 students. I'll ask Mark, do you know that one? I can get it. Uh, and, and, and Gear Park had two additions, by the way, in the beginning of the bond when it was built, and then later on the second bond, there were more additions to it. And, so. and I give the VIP committee, they were very thorough. They would ask, well, where would that elementary go? <laughs> I, said, I don't know really uh, yeah. an answer. But, it's but, just conceptually that if we did that scenario, that we could add one elementary on it. Right. And, you know, uh, you know, they, uh, the VIP was so good at answering questions and, and they would stump me because I don't have all the answers. And that's something that the board, you know, and the community might want to work more on, decide if we did do that scenario, where it would go. So that's why we don't necessarily have the answers. We just gave a generic example right. of what, if you did the minimum, you could still get an elementary in that design because old versus new was a, a big discussion. You know, the VIP committee said they wanted something visible. Infrastructure is not, you know, visible. big yeah. selling. So <laughs> it's and, necessary, but it doesn't big sell. So they wanted a mix of new and, you know, infrastructure the, type. The, the Going into that question, oh. can we go back to the slide where they were asking about that same question? And I want to just get an understanding more of what does that number mean? Where you have that, like, are we building brand new buildings or just maintaining existing? And it was like a survey. You mean the three, the three different options? Um, no, no, no. It was just options. Two, it was two survey. It was saying 6.8. I think what new and old are. OK. Um, Mr. Producer, can we lose this slide on the screen, please? Thank you. It was 6.8. Oh, um, you're talking about slide. slide 17 on that, I believe. I don't have it in front of me anymore. I think it's slide, slide number 12, David. Oh, it's this slide is 12. Is what I, Mr. Trustee Moses is referring to. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. This one where it's renovating. New buildings system. versus yes. renovating yes. existing. I'd like to know more about, yeah, this number. Can, you, can somebody explain to me what is 8.8? .8? Is that out of 10? That is yeah. out of 10. Okay. 10 being the highest. So how did the committee members vote on this? Like, were they asked the question first? 
How, how did 8.8 .8 and the 6.5 came to be about? That was a ranking yeah. of what they thought, like, like bathrooms ranked up there at 9 out of 10 as important. They said renovating existing buildings was 8.8 .8 versus new buildings were 6 point ranked lower. But the Correct. committee members they, were not asked, do you want a new building? No, no, no. The, they were given a list. There was a list of items, if you write. There was a list of items in, from bathrooms, security, new buildings, uh, a crosswalk over Ford Road, green parking lots. So they were given this huge list based upon recommendations that the district saw and ideas that came out of the, co the committee. And they were asked to rank those one to 10. Yeah. yeah. So slide, the next slide gives more of the breakdown. 14 with all the colors. Yeah, that, that one. Nope, back one. Back. So they got to rate each question or each category from one to 10. It wasn't, you know, which one you like over more or the other. It's just each one by themselves on a rating from one to 10. So bathrooms was the number one for them, and the the least was the green parking lots. Then at four point three, yeah, they all could have said green parking lots. They could all have said ten, and would have come up to ten point zero. So they're not related to each other. Just each one by themselves, how they felt about it. Did the committee members I still have a get to? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, then talk about each one, or did they get to choose ten of the the list here and and just your top ten, not every. Point. So they generated ideas from the meeting before, and we put everything out there. So thirty-five okay. people got each item, and they and each I item they now. did a one through ten, right. and that's where but they averaged the question, out. So same question: they were not asked. Would you rather? Obviously, in a perfect world, everybody with unlimited amount of money, we would want new buildings. However, we do have. I want to just mention this. Uh, some people, and um, Trustee Barry can <laughs> uh, attest to this, we do have adamant folks in our community who are holding on to the history and to the buildings, and they're saying, we're not going to tear this part on my dead body. They would go with me on that. So obviously, we're not going to please everybody, and we don't have un unlimited amount of money to bre build brand new schools. I, I was just interested in, in the committee this kind of whole idea is kind of throwing it off and then aggregating it to a number and say, oh, well, seems like the new committee wanted new additions. I would hope that we ask the committee, would you want to invest in renovating older buildings and keeping them as they are? Or would you like to build brand new schools? Was that question ever asked? Yes. So a part of the discussion was legacy and holding on to older buildings because of legacy and because of sentiment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of conversation went on around that. And some of the, com the committee members said, I would rather have my child in a brand new building with yes. the facilities, with the technology, uh -huh. um, and invest the money in a brand new building than hold on to a sentiment and a legacy. And of course, there were committee members that wanted to hold on to that sentiment mm -hmm. and the legacy, and that's why we voted, and that's how these numbers I see. came to be. Thank you. You're welcome. That was helpful. I Do believe you, Mr. Andrews mm -hmm. has something to add. Just to give you, Gear Park is 375 approximately. Yeah. Okay. And is that pretty full? It's pretty full. Yeah. Okay. Every class is full. <laughs> so real quick, going, going back to the size of elementary school that could be built, <laughs> Miller is a perfect example. That's a 70,000 square foot building with about 350 students. And that's comparable to what we put the, out here? The 40 42 million? Yeah. 42 million would get you a, an elementary building just like Miller. How, how yeah. many students are in McCullough and Eunice? Oh, you know I, mean? about 12, I, I have that. Yeah. About 1,200. 1,200 together. Around there. I was just there for the swimming meets for middle school, and this is the first time I see the pool. What an amazing pool! That's that's I know I know pools are like, unfortunately they are very costly to maintain, especially older ones. But yeah. Macaulay Unis is beautiful, as beautiful. I'm not gonna say as beautiful as Fortson or Lori, but it is it is an amazing building that was built by the taxpayers' dollars, and that was great. And I would hope that we would 
perhaps build it brand new schools, but they're very costly, as Mr. Watts so, uh, Mr. Wells said. Did you want your other two questions of what a middle school would cost? In yes, a, um, in a high school? yeah, would would love to. On average, and and I guess this wouldn't include the property, but it's just the building itself. And would that yeah. reflect today's cost of no, building materials? <laughs> and it'll change there, tomorrow. Crazy. I'm remodeling my dad's house right now. It's I think the crazy. historical number we were given before for high school was about $100 million. More, Or was, was it, it more than more that? More. 120 no, was bells and whistles. 180, yeah. 180, yeah. 180, 180 was slide. Slide. Last time we discussed it, it was yeah. between, depending on what we wanted, right. between 85 and 120. I mean, we're not going to build a high school to house 3,000 students, right. but I think we set something like around 12. I don't want to make a guess right now. I think well, it's in, the, it's in one of the that? flights. It is. Yeah, He's Wallace looking for it, so let's yeah. just yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll wait for that. That's fine. What Thank you. Where would that come from? <laughs> there, was, there was a slide that had it broken out from... Um, I saw it somewhere uh, yeah. too. It was on one of the slides. Oh, and, and the slides here. I'm talking yeah. about the last time. No, not last time. This was that one now. This is a report. I have a quick question. Yes. So in, so in and this. And I'll get to Trustee Barry. My question's been answered. It was just okay. a follow up. Make sure that Trustee Mosib's question. So in here, okay. we have so an elementary school, school that says 42 million. Is it that there's a, with this in here, is it a hypothetical or is it the, we would yeah. take. I guess why put the elementary do we need to have a new elementary school? I guess that's the question. You can answer it later on if you're looking for the numbers. Perhaps. Well, I mean in the in the rating score it says that the committee only thinks that's a 5.5. Well, that's what I'm saying. So why do we have it in there if it's not a need? I was wondering the same thing. So did you want to address that, Dr. I would just say, though, it's it's a philosophy, too, right? Um, and I know Mr. Wall is going to talk a little bit about long-term study, okay. but new buildings versus renovations. So, so, that, but that, so, the, okay, so that might be answered later on in Yeah, well, and, and it's, like you said, that's what the the committee was kind of presenting where the philosophy was. So you could, you could really go either way. Like in the 2019, we were mainly looking at renovation in that bond. This so, bond now, there's been discussions about more about new buildings. So with um, that, I guess, is that then if we're thinking of a new elementary school, would that replace an old elementary school? And if it is, then how would we, how would we select what building that would be? We'd be looking at need. We'd be looking at need. Um, and the and condition we have the of things. I was going to say, and then are we looking at the price to maintain an older building versus mm -hmm. long-term sure. getting a new one? Okay, that's why I wanted to make sure we had you that. Sort of. But there's more because, questions than just yeah, that. The, the, can I just add one thing, though? I mean, the reality is if we want new – with a district our size with 35 buildings, 41 school programs, for. Um, and we know of bonds that are like the Ann Arbor with huge – Money to have billion. multiple. It was over a billion, yeah. uh, approximately one, billion. Yeah. one yeah. billion for new. You know, f to get that many buildings. You know, but I think even administration in our discussions. And again, I wasn't on the committee, but it seems like that was where the committee was going to with the appetite for some new buildings, but also understanding the need. At least in administration, our data, we understand the infrastructure need across the district, so everyone's taken care of. But we also understand that there's excitement behind new buildings and there is that give and take where you cut your losses and where you're putting in money into old infrastructure versus, you know, creating new. So, Jesse Berry? Just for the listening audience, we're not going out for a billion dollars. I don't want to say I'm just using that as an example. It was an example. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, Trustee Watts had a very good question. The last time we went out, we heard loud and clear that if you're going to ask for that kind of money, we want some brick and mortar. Uh -huh. So I'm assuming when I, like I said, it was only a few hours ago when we looked at this, I'm assuming that maybe they wanted that discussion at the committee level. That, you know, what does it look like? I don't, you know, this is the first time I've heard that we might have to replace an elementary school. We've talked about, you know, possibly a high school or, or maybe a middle school or something like that. I'm assuming that was just... Just to discuss, to tell you know, mm -hmm. tell the committee, you know, which direction mm -hmm. you do want to go. Yeah, absolutely. If I if I may just interject, when the discussion of a new elementary school came up to the committee, um, same questions were asked: Is it a brand new elementary school, or are we relieving the existing elementary schools because some of them do have 
our overcapacity. And the, the one question that came up at the end of the discussion was, assume we do open up an elementary school and fill it with students, we'll, where will they go to high school in eight years? So we're still at the same capacity issue that we had to begin with. We didn't fix anything. So now we have more elementary schools and still the same number of high schools. Uh, President McDonald, yes. I just want to note that, you know, in the first, probably one, the second slide or third slide where it says the ages of the buildings, we have 12 buildings that are over 90 years old. Uh, this year we're celebrating the 100th year anniversary of Duval and Fortson. Well, and, and Maple. The building and Maple. Yet at Fortson, but yeah. the right. building at Duval is, and so is Salina. Yeah, so. and Salina we celebrated two years ago, or yeah. was it 2019? Well, technically their building doesn't turn, is was 100 in 2021 and 22, just like Duval, but there was a building previously Lee, that was there. that was called Salina, and that was torn down, but that one was built in 1917 or 18, or whenever the 100 year was. So they were celebrating 100 years of Salina, just as Fortson is celebrating 100 years of a Fortson, of a Fortson although there technically was not a Fortson High School. And the building that exists now did not exist in 1921. When did it exist for Fortson? 28. Uh, it 27, 28. That's when it was when built. Fortson, yeah, officially opened. And usually, Mr. Wall, with other districts, are we comparable as far as the building ages or are we on the far out as far as we're probably on the farther out because we're an older school district yeah you know depending on where the district is located you know like novi you know used to be very very small but since they had all those suburban you know Increased growth Columbus they just can. built new buildings and right. so they're they're a much newer school district in their side Probably Detroit is one of the ones yes. with the older buildings. Well, we've seen their buildings. Yeah, Gross right. Point has older schools, things well, like that. But that's what been maintained that, well. That would be so. it. Yeah. Our buildings, our older buildings yeah. have been maintained well, but Excellent. but there's a cost involved, they're old. of course. So, so what's this lifespan of, say, some buildings that we have? Are we expecting another 20 years, 30 years? A great segue into the next section after... This discussion. Okay. Oh, sorry. I was just <laughs> ready to move on because we're actually quite be, uh, far behind schedule. Do we so want to bring up that spreadsheet? Were there any more yeah, yeah. questions? No? Well, yeah. there's one more spreadsheet we want to show you. Oh, I'm you. sorry. So if the back room could bring it up. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So what we did is this yeah. This was a list of all the items that the committee brought back forward back. of things they would like to look at. We took this list and had the architect, the construction manager, you know, plant ran, look at it, and cost it out. Again, there was no way to actually give an actual cost. So we did a low percent quartile and a high quartile. So you know that somewhere the price is going to be between those numbers. And so we did that and then showed our cost by taking the average of the high and low. It kind of gave them an idea. And we gave them this spreadsheet so they could actually take it home and, and select, well, if I'm interested in this, this, and this, what it would total down to. And so they had this to kind of play with to kind of see how much it would cost. So on here, under the new buildings, an elementary school um, would be at, um, let's see, a high school. No, you were asking about a middle school, right? Mm -hmm. So an a, uh, elementary school at 70,000 square feet. I don't know why my number is not there. Don't have a middle school on there. So we didn't actually, they didn't actually look at a middle school and that object. But if you looked at, how big is Macaulay Unis? Students? No. No, no square footage. Square footage. Square footage. Right. It's probably going to be about, about 150 square feet, 150,000. 150,000. So yeah. you're probably looking at probably about 90 million for, you know, a K, you know, eight type building or a middle school. In a high school? They have the high school. In high school, we have on here, you know, for 300,000 square feet, so not as big as Forsen, but close, you're looking at 188 million. And that's how we got to that. And these are the numbers we used, you know, when we developed the building you know, options. Yep, 188. That's with Belson, Wissels, Field, Pool, everything included. Yes, okay. correct. Do you remember what that number was? I know we just, we thought we knew, but do you remember what the number was? 
We talked about maybe a 1,200 to 1,500 story in high school. Well, that that uh, could be lower. that could be closer to what we're saying for the middle school, yes, correct? Based on the number right. of students, one hundred fifty thousand square feet. Right. Yep. So you're closer than ninety to one hundred million dollar barn. Yep. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Wall. Yep. Anyone else? Again, I want to thank the committee. They did a lot of work and yeah, a lot of questions. I was just yeah. about to do that. And Miss Haydar, and yes. also uh, I don't want to put your name. It's Albericat. 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 Thank you so much for your presentation. You did very well. We appreciate your time. And uh, I want to make sure, if she hasn't already, that she does get uh, extra points for her uh, <laughs> her student activities. So. Thank, Thank you. you for for helping us out, and you did marvelously. You did. Thank, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have one quick question. Sure, absolutely. So, is there a difference per square footage between an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school? Yes, there will be, just on the complexity of the classroom. So, like an elementary is not going to have a chemistry lab, but yeah. a high school will. So, so your I'm, square footage cost would go up. Okay, so I figured out for the high school for three hundred thousand square feet, it's six hundred and twenty-six dollars a square foot. Yes, it, it is. Could one, we get the square footage? Could we get the price for elementary school and for yes. middle school based yep. on the square footage? Yep, we can provide okay. that. But then that would include a pool as right. well, which yeah. would be a, a larger increase. Okay. Community. Yeah, and this discussion three years ago, that number would have been a lot less. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. that's unfortunately what we're dealing with. The rate of inflation is going up so much higher. And the cost of materials. Yes. Yeah. And and I was sticker shocked when they gave me the numbers, and I had to actually go on the internet all night looking at it and trying to, you know, come to grips of why is it so much more. But mm -hmm. it's across the nation that mm -hmm. prices are just skyrocketing. Yeah. Good work. Thank you. Community service points was what I was trying to think of. Um. So I hope you can get some extra of those. She's been yes. saying I'm getting an A in all my classes. <laughs> <laughs> and you should have a late start tomorrow. I'm just saying. No, no. no. Yeah. We should. We should. <laughs> Thank you again. Okay, uh, next we have administration. Question and answer. Was that, or was that all kind of combined into what well, we Well, we've made? already kind of gone into it, so we're okay. just going to continue further. <laughs> okay. All right, so on, on your packet in the, in the manila folder, here's some documents. Mm -hmm. uh, the first document is just looking at what we have actually spent our building and site fund mm -hmm. since 2019. Oh, okay. So, and it's just kind of give me an idea. So the main item that we spent on is not the number 10 is 3.3 million on roofs. So we've really focused on the building envelope over the last several years because if you have leaky roofs or HVAC issues, those are what we spent, you know, five of the eight million on is just HVAC and roofs. So this kind of give me a breakdown. We're not really to go through it, but kind of give you some background as you go forward in your discussions today and, and after that you have an idea of what we have already done. And but this is not this is excluding the ESSER funds that Correct. We've now used the additional for. ESSER and the forty million that we had in building in site mm -hmm. from leftover from what we didn't do and that we're wrapping around to do the eighty million dollars project going forward. And that's mainly dealing with HVAC and there'll be some more roofing and you've seen some of those contracts come through right. the last mm -hmm. several months as we get geared up for summer work. Chelsea Thorpe. My sheet only goes one through nine. So while you're mentioning number 10, I don't know if after that you've got a summer, uh, not a summary, but a summation of the vet, how much has been spent on projects since that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It says right there 8.8 .8 million at the yeah. top. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know. If maybe I did copy two sided. I missed it. So I apologize. So it's 8.8 .8 <laughs> plus what we're expecting to be spending this summer. Yeah, this on is what we've already funds. spent. So not dealing with the 80 million that we're working on. Thanks. But this does not include the HVAC, does it? Yeah, HVAC is the very last item of 1.8 million on the sheet. It carries forward that would have been copied on the back side. Is it only for Fortson? But I thought we were doing well. No, Fortson, that's part of the ESSER and the 40 million for that we're doing. Oh, that's only 230k. Site. Okay. These are things we've already spent on before right. we got into this year's works. Of more like emergency yes. repairs that we had to do. Um, can, I, can I ask? Yes. A question? Yes, you okay. Uh, we don't have it in front of here, and I know I saw it on here, but I don't have it right in front of me. Um, we There was a, um, and I know the committee got it, of what we have taken off the list that was on the original 2019 bond. 
is a lot of that what's included in here or that's that's part of what's in the what's 2019 in, in here that we had forward data because yes. we had some roofs and we had some right. HVAC that back then so yeah so this, we had a facility plan done then and right. we took those items that were in the critical needs one to three years and that's what we've been working on okay now occasionally things still happen right. like the plumbing at Oakman was it planned so we have to obviously deal with that as we go along. Well, since I live in that neighborhood, I could have told you it was coming because I got problems. <laughs> but on the administrative Q&A, we again, again have to look at short term and long term. Obviously, we have to do something in the interim, and we also have to plan for the future. Now, one of the things that has been brought up in the past is the when does the useful life of our buildings eventually get to a point where it no longer makes sense to renovate and we should start building new. Now that's something that's a long, you know, correlation type study. And so I, I reached out to two companies to kind of help us with that plan. Because that, you know, you're 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 dealing with a lot of time and effort and you know comparisons and analyzing data that I don't know if we're necessarily the best to be able to do that. So I reached out to two companies to look at that, and I did give you a copy of a proposal from one company that would do that and the price range involved with that. One of the things that um, people don't consider a lot of times when they talk about building new, and since we, we don't have a lot of vacant land and they think that we're just going to knock down that building and put up a new one, what do you do with the students in the meantime? Because they have to be educated somewhere and a building doesn't go up in three months during the summer. Right, and that's the logistics they, of it. They have to be put someplace else um, to be educated for a year, potentially longer, while the we use the property, the existing property we own, and and it, it's something to really consider when you're telling people you're we're gonna upheave your neighborhood while knocking down an old building and um, reconstructing a new building on the same site. Otherwise, you're gonna be moving everybody someplace else. Correct. So and and I I want to caution that somebody will be impacted and I've been on boundary committees before where you're just moving them from one existing building to another existing building and it's stressful. Um so uh, it, that always has to be taken <coughs> into consideration when we talk about it. It's it's not as logistically simple as just um finding the money and starting uh, putting a shovel in the dirt. Yep, and I uh, give the credit to the VIP committee came up with the same question. And they had some suggestions too, so good job on that. <laughs> Again, you know, un until we know what the future entails, right. you know, it was they brought up that issue and they understood it, and it's something that we would have to consider. So I do have that in there as just kind of your background. Okay. Um, if you look at the actual pricing, you know, they, as one estimate, it was anywhere from the mid 150s to 200 thousand dollars to do a study like that. But that would give you a plan over the life of the next 30 years, similar to what Detroit has recently done, and what it would look like, you know, the phasing of it, how we would look at a big picture or big component of that is the educational program. Because obviously it would always be cheaper just to keep renovating or, or redoing parts of building. But at some point, the building outlasts its useful life for our educational program, and it's diminishing, you know, returns on the education that we're offering the kids. So those are the things that also have to be consideration in this type of a study. Trustee Moser? I have a question, maybe trust uh, Mr. Wall, this is unrelated probably to the board discussion about a bond, but might be kind of related. The hold, the hold harmless, so we're expecting to renew that in a few years? Well, at, at, as time progresses, the, the funding mi model in Michigan, the, the maximum foundation the state pays and what ours is is slightly above that, that gap is narrowing. Uh -huh. At some point, it's going to overtake it, and we'll no longer be a hold harmless district. So if you remember last year, if we were a, a, a standard foundation allowance, you, you received a little over $500 on a per people allowance. We only received $180. So as so you can see, they've been closing the gap. Now, this year, the governor has proposed another 400 plus to that, and we would get the way they have designed right now, they're not doing a 2x4 unless so we would maintain that distance. But again, it has to go through the legislative process right. and the Senate and the House might say, no, we want to go to a 2x formula. It might happen this year. You know, it's one of those things we just don't know because it's a legislative process that the government, you know, the state government oversees. 
So there could be a, a situation that we would no longer levy the 6.17 mils. Well, we just don't know until it gets So what happens months. when we cross that? So when we cross that, the 6.17 mils would go away. Right. We would no longer levy that because of what the state's paying the us taxpayers would no longer is pay meeting and exceeding what we were promised, you know, with based on inflation since 1994 when Proposal A came to be. So would the taxpayers see a huge break on their taxes? Yes. But would the state then compensate us? Well, the state That's has the to point, pay yeah. additional money for yeah. us to bring us back up to our normal revenue levels. Right. Yes. <laughs> okay. But the one question I did have about that, and I had asked you that, and we don't have an answer because it's not been encountered before, is what if the state funding change, shifts again and, and we drop down. that back below? Are we allowed to then reinstate that hold harmless? Or are they going to say... It's done. It's over with, and you're, as you're long not as the be mills at, still at the exist, funding you, know, you were are, were accustomed to, right? Because we have to the voters approve on that yeah. old harmless millage every ten years, and it's coming up when twenty twenty four, twenty twenty four, and our eighteen mills. So we do it every ten years, I believe. Correct. So we're coming up to that prefix again, and then we have to worry about how to handle it. Yeah. So oh, it's. It's a conversation Trust again. Trustee Watts? So going back to this um, corporation or business that would be able to give us a master plan, so with that, would they be able to give us a longitudinal, longitudinal study um, regarding all of our buildings or just which buildings? We would ask for all of our buildings. So all of our buildings, yes. we would be able to say at this, they would be able to research it and say this is what, this is what how much it would be to maintain going 10 years out, 20 years out. Well, maintaining of where the existing building is, what are the needs. Mm -hmm. Now, we have worked out a facility report so they'll know what the needs are. So at some point, when does it overtake it that it makes no longer sense to keep investing into the building mm -hmm. and you should build new? Okay, but they're going to look at all of our buildings. Yes, because okay. these buildings are going to be handled separately to based on age, what program, what it's used for, and the instructional component, you know, it depends where that's going. So it's going to give you a, an idea of where to start looking at that, which will then start a whole nother committee approach and discussion of the public of how we're going to. What sort of time frame would they need before we would get the results? That was a good question. That was asked and it's not a fast study. So I don't know if it would be ready by the time we do anything on our current needs. It might even pass that. So uh, they, we just started the discussions last week or actually just this week on Monday with one company and we have another meeting after spring break with the other company. So they wouldn't, we wouldn't get the results in time by this, by this no. fiscal year? This fiscal year, no. No. Most likely not. When we, in the discussions with them, um, you know, this doesn't involve just us. When they do a study like this, it is, the community is part of it. And they bring together community groups and, and community input into looking at this because they also need that in weighing out those factors of does the does the community want support new buildings and where is the where are the trends and the attitudes in the community go into their findings it's not just you know it's data points mm -hmm. but the community input is another data point that they use in 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 this longitudinal study i gave them a possible timeline of fall to spring to complete a work the work like this and they said you know they they said that that would be realistic time frame so with that since it doesn't affect i guess the discussion here do we have something similar to this before in the past that we could use as a reference i don't not that i've seen well I mean, outside of our, you know, work every year looking at, you know, our needs. Right. Okay. I guess I was hoping that we would have already had this just because I think it adds value to the discussion here. And I'm kind of sad that we don't because I think that this would give us a little bit more of um, well, a long-term The next look. document kind of helps you lead into that discussion. So, yes, so dealing with the facility report. Okay. So, obviously, the facility report is not completed because we haven't embedded it with 10 more buildings and the third party review, they're meeting again on tomorrow to kind of hopefully finish it up here shortly. Uh, this gives you what, on a summary level, 
by building and then the next page by category of you know the needs from one to three and so forth. So you can see here that obviously we can take this data and look at the cost of construction or remodeling for the buildings based upon you know a 10 plus years. And if that dollar value starts rising to a point where it's no longer makes sense, you can build a brand new one at a almost the same price or at, you know an additional 30, 40 percent. That's when you start making decisions based on just the monetary analytical size. Of, does it make sense to replace the building or just refurbish it at that point? So okay. those that's what this sheet will help you do. Now dealing with the public opinions, you know, and the instructional use and all that is more factors that this company kind of takes it all into play and develops the plan. So then who came up with this document? So this is done by Plant Rank Tressa and the district team okay, going it. through the building. The principals also go through this building. The building engineers go through this. And this is the culmination of building by building, you know, section by section, reviewing it and seeing what needs to be had. Okay, so we do have some, okay, I, I yes. understand now. So we do have some sort of data. I yep. All right, thank and you. And so that's on a building basis for the whole, on a 10 plus year look, the next page breaks it down by critical needs, by deferred, you know, four to six years, mm -hmm. you know, seven to 10 and 10 plus. So this is where the whole conversation that we have on the agenda of short term and long term. Do we so have obviously if you look at the totals, you're, you're well over $800 million. We're, there's no way we're going to be able to address that on a short term basis. Do we have priorities then? Priority yes. one, priority two. So that's where we look at criticals one yep. to three years that on a short term we need to address. Okay. Is that me done? Yes, Trustee Mazin. Thank you. Thank you um, for walking me through all the forms. That worked out well. This is more for the viewers and obviously we're following and I want to just make sure that we, we highlight this slide, which meant, uh, I think the fourth slide about the states that pay zero construction costs. Right. So I... And correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Wall. So in 1994, Michigan residents passed Proposal A, which included a lump sum of saying the school costs as far as construction of new buildings are the responsibility of the residents of if that they, school. If district. they vote on you know, doing that, otherwise you have to take away from the instructional program to handle that out. Correct. Before, each board every year would go to the public and say, we want to raise one mil. And we can use that one mill for this purpose. Right. That, that's how it used to be. Yes. Back before but proposal before A. That, before Prop A, did the state give money to school districts to build in our schools? Some they did and some they did not. Okay. Depending if you were in formula or out of formula, based upon how much revenue you were bringing in. I see. Um, because what this happened, it, it pretty much put older communities like ours at a very disadvantage because they're talking about equity of per pupil funding, but they don't take older buildings into consideration right. when they do that formula, correct? Right. So if they compare us to, for example, Northville, which is a newer community, they don't say, well, their one has older buildings, so we should give them more money. Right, and then it goes all the way back to where we've, Dr. Blake and I have talked before about the funding model in Michigan needs to be worked because it doesn't address how much busing you have in the district, how many ESL students you have. Mm -hmm. It doesn't address all that. It's just a flat dollar value based on one point in time. Mm -hmm. There were districts that had a mill that just went off that lost that money because for that year they decided not to levy it and they lost that funding for a future year. So there was winners and losers when Proposal A came into being. Correct. And my follow up to that is, do we anticipate the legislature doing anything to change in the near future as far as really they talk about it in election years? Oh, we're going to invest in our schools. But looking at them, like when you look at other states like Maryland that invested $2.2 .2 billion right. in just building brand new schools in their districts. And they looked at communities that were very old or that had older buildings and they gave them more of the buck, more of the funding to bring their schools up to the standards of other communities. Yeah, you've seen it more at the federal level than the state level because the federal Do, level, they talk about the infrastructure. Are we, we anticipating that? We were out of it. Right now, we're out of it. 
Are you, we, I, I don't know if you're following Mr. Wall, but are we anticipating that with the current administration, or the Biden administration, maybe with a, a build back better plan by President it's Biden? It's more recognized, but I haven't seen anything come out of it. Substantial, yet. similar yeah. to the community college free option. Right. It's like that didn't work, probably. We, we don't know. Thank you. I just wanted to make those points clear because. And just one other point, I just had the book. I know, I know we get compared a lot, and this conversation came to be about in 2019. We get compared a lot to, Mar to Northville and Canton and newer communities that have brand new schools, brand new. Obviously, you know, COVID has told us one thing that older buildings with ventilation right. contribute, unfortunately, to the spread of infection. And newer buildings where you have better ventilation, where you have better AC, where you have pretty much state-of-the-art buildings are better equipped for our students in the new era. Um, and, and, and it just makes me wonder when, and this is not a question for you, Mr. Wall, but for the legislatures that we have in, in Lansing and also at the federal level, is like, and I know they're doing their best, but so for all of us as a nation, when do we go back and invest in our schools? Right. And not only invest in educate in teachers and teachers' salaries, which is great, which is amazing, and that's what we want. But we also need to invest in our buildings. Right. And our uh, wearing and, yep, and on page eleven from. of the first presentation I did shows you where Plymouth Canton has gone way below above the average for bonding because the community has accepted they want to maintain those newer schools or even build newer schools. So yeah, that, that's the conversation that we're going to have to have at some point, you know, with our board and our public and see where they'd like to go.